friends welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new here this is video number two in my eat this not that savvy ww food swaps the first video we talked all about breakfast and some savvy swaps you can make from your higher point breakfast items and simply swap those out for some lower point breakfast items that are equally as delicious so i will link that video down in the description box below if you have not seen that that was the first video in this series this is video number two and today we are going to be talking about savvy swaps eat this not that for lunch and dinner. Some basic staples for your lunches and your dinners that you can make very simple swaps, lower the smart points, but still have absolutely delicious food choices. So let's jump right into this Eat This, Not That, Savvy WW's Food Swaps, Lunch and Dinner. <laughs> all things bread. So as you know, traditional bread or your regular store-bought bread is not too bad in smart points. You can generally have a full-size slice of regular white wheat bread for about three smart points per slice. But there are some great savvy swap bread options out there that are equally as delicious, most of the time far more nutritious, and are great swaps for bread. So the number one on my list is the Trader Joe's Sprouted Wheat Sourdough Bread. This bread is delicious. It has seven grams of protein per slice. It is two smart points per slice. So four for two if you're making a sandwich or if you want a couple slices of toast. Two smart points per slice and it is packed with seven grams of protein. And it's dense and delicious and amazing. Now if you're more leaning towards the white bread option, there is the Nature's Own Butter Bread. Now this is a great option as well. It is two smart points for one slice or three smart points for two. So great choice for a low point bread option. This is your traditional white bread. So if that's where your game is, this is a great swap for a higher smart point bread. And the last one that I wanna share with you is the Sara Lee 45 calorie bread. Now, this is not my favorite bread. As you guys know, I don't care for it. I feel that it's very airy. There's not much to it, but it is only one smart point per slice. So depending on where you're going with your bread options, you can either go for the higher point, more nutrient dense Trader Joe's or your traditional white bread with the nature's own butter bread, or if you really wanna save some points and you don't mind that more airy, less filling, less dense bread, then the Sara Lee 45 calorie is a great savvy swap for bread. Next is lunch meat. Now most lunch meats are fairly low in smart points. So the what I wanna share with you today as far as lunch meat goes is eat this, not that. Don't eat the lunch meat that has added sugar. So you're gonna find a lot of like honey hams and those types of things that have added sugar. They're just going to elevate your smart points. Doesn't mean that you can't have that, but there are some swaps that you can make to save a lot of points on lunch meat. My number one choice is either a turkey or a chicken. So a smoked or a peppered turkey or chicken is going to be the lowest smart points. There are several brands out there. Boar's Head is one of those that is zero smart points on the blue or purple plan. So you can make a nice turkey or chicken sandwich for zero smart points for your lunch meat if you pick up the right kind. So Boar's Head is one of those and then Costco also carries a Naturals that is zero smart points as well. Some other low smart point lunch meat options are a basic Black Forest ham. You can generally have about two ounces for one to two smart points. You can also buy roast beef. I know you wouldn't think so, but generally roast beef is about one smart point per ounce. Now of course this is going to depend on the brand of lunch meat that you're buying, but you can swap out those sugar laden lunch meat for some of these other zero or low point options and you still have a delicious lunch meat sandwich or you can roll up a string cheese or just eat it straight out of the container for a high protein low smart point snack. While we're talking lunch meat I want to go into a few other protein savvy swaps that you can make on your WW journey and the main one of those is hamburger. So your 80-20 or your 90-10 or even your 93-7 hamburgers are going to be a lot higher in smart points than the extra lean version of hamburger, which is the 96 Four. My favorite 96 for lean ground beef is from Trader Joe's. It is delicious. I also love the one from Walmart. And you can have four ounces 
of 96 for extra lean ground beef for two smart points. So you can make yourself a big juicy burger patty for two smart points. So by just cutting out those higher fat cuts of meat, you can still have your favorite things. You just make a savvy swap for a lower fat version. So take your high fat or full fat hamburger, swap it for 96.4. You're not going to notice much difference and you're going to save yourself a lot of points. So juicy burgers are still on your plan on WW. What about turkey burger? As you know, 99% fat free turkey burger is zero smart points on both the blue and purple plan. A lot of us, myself included, aren't the biggest fans of 99% lean. I find it to be very flavorless. You really have to season that sucker up and it is on the dry side. So I tend to lean more towards the 93.7 ground turkey, but now you're looking at the same smart points as 96.4 lean ground beef about four ounces for two to three smart points of the 93.7 ground turkey. It's gonna be a little bit more flavorful, it's gonna be a little moister, but it's kind of up to you what you want as far as your ground turkey goes. Now, like I said, you can doctor up 99%, which is zero smart points, and make meatballs out of it, meatloaf out of it, add it as your meat for spaghetti. You can definitely doctor it up with some spices and even adding something that's going to add some moisture to it, like maybe breadcrumbs and eggs or milk or something to kind of of not only bulk it up but add in that moisture but really you can swap out those high fat turkeys for 99% and it's zero smart points now on the green plan it is so low about one smart point for a serving of 99% ground turkey so that's a great swap as far as ground turkey goes steak what if you're craving a steak you can certainly have a low point option steak and your best bang for your points buck as far as steak goes is going to be a flank steak. This is going to be the leanest cut of steak that you can find. Now with that comes a heftier price. Flank steak is not inexpensive, but it is going to be the lowest amount of smart points. Now you can do some other savvy swaps with your steaks and you can buy a loin or a petite sirloin and you can cut off all visible fat and really decrease the amount of smart points as well. So steak is not out of the question. I loved the shaved steak that I can buy at my local Kroger store or Fred Meyer store. I've also heard that this is sold at other grocery stores as well. So just check your local grocery store. But this is generally a fairly lean cut of meat. It is cut very thin, similar to what you would find on say a Philly cheesesteak sandwich. So it makes a great dupe for that. But if you just buy the leanest cut of steak that you can find, you can still incorporate steak into the protein source. Just swap it out for a leaner cut. And if you didn't know, you guys, pork chops are not high in smart points. I couldn't believe that pork chops were lower in smart points than I would have originally given them credit for. You think pork, you think pig, you think high in smart points, but that's not necessarily the case, especially if you're buying a leaner cut of pork chop. Anytime that you can get a center cut of pork or meat in general, especially when it comes to bacon, you're going to get a lower smart point. Same thing you, with steak, you can go ahead and just cut off any visible fat. And of course that's gonna lower the amount of points as well. But pork chops are a great option. You can get them bone in, bone out. You can get them thin cut, thick cut. They're really honestly a very low smart point option and they're usually nice and juicy and tender. So don't discount pork just pick the right cut. And the last protein I wanna talk about is hot dogs and sausages. This is everything from sausages that you put on a bun to sausage that you have for breakfast. So let's first talk about hot dogs. Hot dogs are generally extremely high in smart points. Your ballpark, those types of things are generally very high, but you can swap those out for a couple of lower point hot dog options. One of those being the Hebrew National Low Fat Hot Dogs. These are one smart point per hot dog. These are a great option. They cook up nicely, they're delicious. So this is gonna be one of your lowest smart point hot dog options. Also, you can find a turkey dog or even a turkey kielbasa, and those are gonna be generally low in smart points as well. With the kielbasa, you can just cut 
the size of hot dog that you're looking for or sausage that you're looking for for whatever dish it is that you're having those in. Another thing I want to point out as far as hot dogs or sausages is the Sam's Choice Chicken Apple Sausage. These are stellar. They have fabulous ingredients. In fact, they are Whole30 approved. That's how great the ingredients are. You can find these at your local Walmart as Sam's Choice is a Walmart brand. And these are two smart points per sausage. That's it. That is incredible for a full size sausage. I like to have these for breakfast, lunch, dinner, you name it. So there are some very savvy swaps you can make as far as protein choices go when it comes to hot dogs and sausages. Just scan or enter into the nutritional calculator, but there are a few really good swaps for you. I also want to talk a little bit about wraps. Another thing you may not be aware of is tortillas or wraps are really high in smart points. So those big burrito shells that you can buy from Mission or that you get at your local Mexican restaurant, those are 200 to 300 calories per tortilla. That is crazy. There are some great swaps when it comes to this. Number one is the Olay wrap. These are one smart point. They come in a high fiber, a tomato basil, a spinach and herb. They're absolutely delicious. And for one smart point for a full size tortilla or wrap, you can't beat it. Another couple options are the two Maros. I really, really like the premium white. This is your traditional white flour tortilla and it is one smart point. Also Mission makes a carb conscious one. That is another option or carb counter. I'm not sure it'll be here on the screen for you, but that's another really good low point option. So I find that often for lunch, I will incorporate tortillas or wraps as my bread instead of traditional bread because it's big. I can load it up with all of my favorite veggies and proteins and sauces, and it makes a really low smart point option. I also make a lot of quesadillas with these, especially the Olay wraps. They make great quesadillas, and you can have two wraps for two smart points. You can't beat it. So check out some of these savvy swaps for your tortillas and your wraps. Another thing people automatically discount when they start any diet or healthy eating journey is pasta. People think you can no longer have pasta because you're on a healthy eating journey. My friends, that is not accurate. There are some great pasta substitutions out there. There are a ton of zero point pastas. If you follow the purple plan, your brown rice, your whole grain, your lentil, all of those pastas are going to be zero smart points on the purple plan. Now, for those of us that are following blue or green, or even if you're on purple and you just don't like those pasta options, highly recommend fiber gourmet. You guys know this pasta is my ride or die. I love this pasta so much. It is half or less the smart points of traditional pasta. You can have two ounces of fiber gourmet pasta for three smart points. There's elbows, rotini, penne, and spaghetti. They have all the types of pastas that your little heart could ever desire, and you cannot beat three smart points for an entire serving of pasta. Hands down, the best. It is packed with protein and packed with fiber, so you're actually getting a good nutritional boost from this pasta as well. I buy mine off of the Nettrition website. I will link that down below for you guys. Go check their website out. They have hundreds of WW friendly items. If you want to know what maybe my top four or five are, leave that in the comments and I'll share that with you. But I order off of this site probably once a month. It's affordable and it literally has everything, including fiber gourmet pasta. So pasta, my friends, is not out of the realm of what you can have regularly on WW. And with your pasta, you need some pasta sauce. So we're gonna talk red and we're gonna talk white. As far as red pasta sauce goes, your best bang for your points buck is going to be homemade, make it at home in your crock pot or on the stove, zero smart point marinara. My favorite is from the Skinniest Dish. I will link that recipe down below for you guys. It literally takes five minutes to throw everything in your crock pot, turn it on, let it cook, and you have zero smart point no matter how much you have on every plan absolutely delicious marinara. You can use this for spaghetti, on pasta, on pizza, to dip things in such as two ingredient dough breadsticks. It is 
delicious. I know that there's a couple other zero point marinara options out there, but I'll link the skinniest dish because that's my very favorite. Most other traditional jarred marinaras are going to range from two to four smart points for about a half of a cup. So it's kind of up to you what you want to spend your points on, but a really savvy swap is to take out all of the points of your marinara and do a zero point option. Now for white sauce, there are several options out there. I do want to caution you that a lot of the traditional Alfredo or white sauces and the lower fat or lower calorie ones have about the same smart points. So this is a great chance for you to use your scanner or your calculator to compare because sometimes you can buy the full fat version for the same smart points or just one or two smart points more than the light version. Classico brand is a prime example of this. The traditional Classico I think is one smart point more than the light. Now I'm all about saving the point so I generally buy the light and I think it's delicious but just do some calculations but you can definitely work alfredo sauce into your day it is really actually very low in smart points I will put here on the screen the points for the light for a serving it's incredibly low and it's really truly creamy and delicious so zero point red sauce and a very low smart point white sauce and you have pasta next up is cheese I love cheese like I really love cheese. I love me some cheese. So there are a lot of high fat cheeses out there. Your traditional cheeses that aren't reduced fat or low fat are going to be fairly high in smart points. But there are a lot of low point or low fat cheeses out there that are super easy savvy swaps where you can still indulge in delicious cheese and save yourself a ton of smart points. Number one is going to be a light string cheese versus a full fat string cheese. I like the light string cheese at Trader Joe's and also Frigo makes a really good light string cheese as well. As far as cheese slices go, my go-tos are the Jarlsberg light Swiss cheese. It is a full size slice of cheese for one smart point. Sargento also makes an extra thin slice of cheese. That is one smart point for a slice as well. And Velveeta makes a one smart point cheese slice too. So kind of whatever your favorite is as far as cheeses go, the kind of cheese, the consistency of the cheese, the meltability of the cheese, those are some great slice low point options. And as far as shredded goes, I generally will use fat free shredded cheese and mozzarella because you can have a quarter cup for zero smart points on all plans. Now, if you're not a fat free cheese person, you can get a reduced fat cheese and it's generally two to three smart points for about a quarter of a cup. It's going to depend on the brand of cheese that you choose. Also, Trader Joe's has an organic mozzarella cheese that is so incredibly delicious. It is so indulgent, like a full fat cheese, but it is only two smart points for a quarter cup. That's my go-to when I'm making pizzas or when I'm wanting mozzarella cheese, that really creamy mozzarella, I'll go for the Trader Joe's organic. But because it's organic, you're gonna pay a pretty hefty price. It's about $5 a bag. But in my opinion, it's delicious, it saves on points, and it just bulks up that cheesiness of any dinner. So cheese is definitely an option. You just have to swap those full fat or high fat versions for a lighter version, and you still get the creaminess and deliciousness of cheese. Pizza. Who doesn't love pizza? I mean, honestly, if you don't like pizza, leave it in the comments because I've yet in my 44 years of life met somebody that doesn't like pizza. Now people's toppings that they like or don't like may change, but I've never met someone who legit doesn't like pizza. So if that's you, leave that down below. So there are some great options as far as pizzas go. The lowest point is going to be making it on your own especially if you follow blue or purple you can make what's called two ingredient dough so that is equal parts of non-fat greek yogurt my favorite is faye and it is equal parts of self-rising flour gold metal makes a great self-rising flour you mix that together and voila you have pizza dough and it's very low in points because you only have to count the points for the flour so if you're into making your own you can make bagels out of this breadsticks garlic knots people make cinnamon rolls out of this dough it's endless the opportunities with this dough now let's say you don't want to make your own dough what about buying a store-bought dough you can get a cauliflower crust and they're going to be a little bit less in smart points and trader joe's also has a butternut squash and a broccoli crust i have not tried the broccoli but the squash one is delicious and those are going to be lower smart point options as well you can go to your smart ones or your lean cuisines for pre-made pizza 
They are a little bit hefty in points, but if you want the convenience of literally throwing it into your oven and cooking it and calling it a day, those are great options for you. But I recommend making your own pizza with a homemade crust, especially that two ingredient dough. Top it with some zero point marinara and you, my friends, have a very low smart point pizza. And we're talking pizza for low smart points. Cookies, I wanna talk about cookies. I love cookies. So we can sell cookies, my friends. We just need to swap out those high point cookies like those double stuffed Oreos and those big, huge chocolate chip cookies you find at your local bakery for just a more savvy, for your points, buck cookie. So I have some favorites. I love the Oreo Thins. Those are a great option for a low smart point cookie. You still get an Oreo. You still feel like you're having this really yummy high point cookie, but it's the thin version. And in my opinion, it's absolutely delicious. I love the yellow. I think it's the vanilla one. I'll put a picture here for you guys. That's my very favorite Oreo Thin. I love it. Also in the same token of cookies is biscotti. Biscotti can be a little bit lower in smart points and you still feel like you're having an indulgent cookie. Trader Joe's again has some great options for some low point biscottis. I know that Chips Ahoy also makes a Chips Ahoy thin. So I guess the moral of the cookie story is buy a thin or a cookie that you can have several of for a set points value because then you can decrease the number of cookies that you eat to lower the smart points. Stay away from double stuffed, frosted, loaded with sugar, big, huge cookies, and you can still indulge and have some of your favorite things. There are so many great recipes out there for low point cookies as well. So do your research, see if you can find some low point cookie recipes. I've made a few here on my YouTube channel. I made a no bake cookie, I've made a peanut butter cookie, I've made low point sugar cookies for an Easter recipe. You can either make your own, but there are still some great in store options where you can still have cookies and stay within your points. Like you can literally have a cookie a day and stay within your points. What about hamburger buns and hot dog buns? So I've got my hot dogs options, I've got my low point hamburger options, but what do I put them on? So you can buy, normally in most so stores, they're smaller hamburger buns and they're going to range from two to three smart points, depending on the brand. I know that there's a brand on the East Coast, I believe it's Schmidt 647, I don't have that where I live, but I believe that those buns are two smart points a piece. You just have to scan and enter information. It's going to vary on the brand. But if you're looking for a one smart point hamburger bun, there is the smart bun. Now that is from the same company that made the smart muffins that I talked about in my breakfast video. And they also make the one smart point smart cakes. And that is Smart Baking Company and they make what's called a smart bun. It is one smart point for a big full size hamburger bun. I will caution you that the texture is a little bit different than your traditional bun. I find them best grilled or crisp, crispy from a pan, like a little spray butter, throw them in a pan, get them nice and crispy. I find that that helps a little bit with the texture. But if you're looking for a one smart hamburger bun, that's a great option. Now hot dog buns, again, are gonna range in points based on the brand. But I know that Schmidt's brand is two smart points. The hot dog I pick up from my friend Meyer or Kroger store are three points. So again, you're gonna spend anywhere from two to three smart points for most hot dog or hamburger buns, unless you take the smart baking route, then those are one smart point. My code for 10% off of the smart baking website, this is going to be the buns, the smart cakes, and the smart muffins is here on the screen. And of course, I will link that down below for you guys. So there are lots of options when it comes to hamburger and hot dog buns. You just have to pick the savvy swap that fits best into the points you want to spend on a bun. Another thing I love and eat a lot of is rice. And to be honest, your points on rice are going to vary as crazy as that seems. You would just think that rice is rice and the points are going to be the same but that's not necessarily the case so again if you are following the purple plan brown rice is going to be zero smart points so of course that's going to be your go-to on the purple plan for rice i'm not the biggest fan of brown rice i find a hard i find it hard to cook it to a consistency that i like and that nutty flavor just is not my favorite so i generally lean towards a white rice my very favorite white rice is jasmine rice, and it is a little bit hefty in smart points. So I generally will just lower my serving. I have about a half of a cup of it, and that can range from three to five smart points. You can also pick up a short grain white rice, 
and you can have a half a cup from three for three to five smart points. So rice is really a pretty low smart point option. The best bang for your points buck when it comes to rice is going to be wild rice. You can have an entire cooked one cup serving for five smart points. Now the rest of your rices are gonna be six to seven smart points for the same amount. So if you're not a big fan of wild rice, you can still have your white rice or your long grain rice and your points are gonna be fairly similar. And the best dupe for rice or pasta or any type of higher point side dish is just lower the serving to get lower smart points. I generally eat between a quarter of a cup and half of a cup of rice when I have it and then that way it still works really well within my day. I want to talk about french fries i love french fries and if you buy them from any restaurant or fast food they are pretty high in smart points you can make your own at home so easily in your air fryer or in your oven so i want to share with you some of my favorite french fry options if you are looking for a regular crispy fry orida really truly makes in my opinion one of the best French fries that you can cook at home. Whether it's shoestring, crinkle cut, the crispy fries, the steak fries, Rida in my opinion is really the best brand when it comes to French fries. Another brand I really like is Alexia and these are really good and they have fabulous sweet potato fries. Now French fries are going to range in points if you don't cook them in oil from anywhere from four to six smart points per serving. Now if you go for tater tots or little rounds, those are going to be higher points. So that's your savvy swap. Don't buy tater tots or the little rounds. Go for a fry because they're going to be less in smart points. Now if you have the points to spare, I love a tater tot. I love a good tater tot. So I will buy like the Orita tater tots. They're just going to cost you more in smart points and you certainly won't get as big of a serving as you do in a sweet potato or a regular French fry. And again, don't cook them in oil, throw them in your air fryer or your oven and you have a really low smart point, but delicious. You feel like you're indulging in fast food side dish. I want to give a mention out to salad kits. So I know those of us on a healthy eating journey or those of us that hear about what you should eat when you're on a diet, you always hear about salad. But let me caution you, my friends, salads that you buy at a restaurant can be really high in smart points. Like you literally can have a hamburger and fries for the exact same amount of smart points and calories as a lot of these restaurant made salads. Your dressing is where you're getting caught up in points. So there are some great salad kits out there and there are some not so great salad kits out there. Now the best thing that you can do if you're really trying to conserve points is to buy a salad kit and not use the dressing. Use all of the other goodness that comes in the salad kit but sub out your own low smart point salad dressing. Now this isn't always an option and for me I like to literally just use the kit that I buy. So I've found some really good low smart point salad kits. Two of which are found at Trader Joe's. One of them is the Mediterranean kit and one of them is their veggie kit and this is a fairly new one. These you can have an entire serving for about four smart points. Sometimes three smart points depending on the kind of salad kit. That's all of the goodies in the kit and the dressing. At your local store a really good option is going to be either a light Caesar salad kit or the Dole Endless Summer is another one that is pretty low in smart points. And again, they're going to range from four to five smart points per serving, and generally a serving is about a cup. So that's a lot of salad. It's great as a side dish. I probably wouldn't recommend having a salad kit as your main entree or the majority of your meal because you're not gonna get enough for a low smart point to really fill you up. But if you're craving salad and you want something quick and easy that you can just throw together, dressing included, the these are some great options. Again, the best thing to do is to scan your local store, see what's out there, put it into your recipe or put it into your nutritional calculator or scan it with your barcode scanner and see exactly what the smart points are going to be. But be very cautious of salad kits and salads at restaurants. Next up is soup. A thing you think would be pretty low in smart points. Nope. It all depends on the soup. Did you guys know that Campbell's tomato soup is about six smart points a serving? That is crazy. You would think tomato soup, it's a vegetable. It should be low in smart points. Nope. It's all the stuff they add to it. The sugar, the starches that they add to soup that elevate the smart points. So really watch your soups. Your best bet for soup is going to be to swap those types of soups for a light 
soup. The number one light soup that is delicious is Progresso. And you could, cannot go wrong with really any of the Progresso light soups. You can generally have the entire can for less than five smart points. My favorites are the chicken tortilla. That one is delicious. I really like the clam chowder, but really you can't go wrong with getting a Progresso light soup. So the best thing to look for when you're buying a soup is healthy, heart healthy, light, low fat, look for those. Make sure you are scanning them or putting them into your calculator to see the exact smart points per serving and per can. Make sure you are watching the, um, the serving size and making sure you're putting that in right. But if you go with a light or a low fat soup, you can generally have a really good low smart point option. I will caution you with soup, and this is any soup, is watch your sodium. Soup usually is high in sodium, maybe not the best thing to have before you weigh in because it will retain some water in your body because of its sodium content. But as far as soup goes, it's a great option on WW. You just have to swap out the high fat soup and the high point soup for the light, low fat, and low point soup. And the last lunch or dinner savvy swap or eat this, not that is frozen meals. This is another thing that can be pretty tricky to navigate. A lot of those frozen meals out there are so high in points. Your Marie calendars, you guys, these are loaded with points. Your banquets, your hungry man, these have tons of smart points, tons of fat, tons of calories, loaded with preservatives, artificial things, and sodium, tons of sodium. So I wouldn't recommend frozen meals as a staple on your journey. I think always eating a home cooked or whole food is a better option. But I know that there are times when a frozen meal has to happen. A busy day at work for lunch or when you get home from a long day of work or school or the gym and you just want something quick and easy and you just throw it in the microwave and voila, you have a dinner. So if you are going to take the frozen meal route, I highly recommend the smart ones. Those are the Weight Watchers endorsed meals. Those are going to be generally fairly low in smart points. Lean Cuisine is another one. Healthy Choice makes some great steamer types of frozen meals that are really, really low in smart points and absolutely delicious. And the ingredients are not so shabby on those healthy choice options. So you have to do some scanning and some putting information into the calculator on your frozen meals before making your choices. But there are some great options out there if you are looking for something convenient, quick, and easy. Another thing kind of on the frozen meal train but not really an entire meal is going to be the Amy's Organic Burritos. These are a great option and they are generally six to eight smart points. So that's a healthier, whole, more whole food option if you're looking for a quick, easy frozen meal. Don't buy those fat laden, calorie laden ones and just savvy swap out for a lighter version of your favorite frozen meal. All right, my friends, that is it for a second video in my Eat This, Not That Savvy Swaps on WW. We talked all things lunch and dinner, and I hope that you got some great ideas of some very simple savvy swaps that you can make to incorporate your favorite foods into your WW or your healthy eating lifestyle. Nothing is off limits with WW. That is my favorite thing about this program. We can eat whatever we want to eat. We can buy our food wherever we want to buy our food, whether that's the health food store, on Amazon, off of an affiliate link or a discount code or at our local grocery store. It's our journey and we get to choose where we buy our foods and what foods we put into our body. Everyone's opinion is going to vary. And I always say sometimes those opinions, keep them to yourself as far as food goes, because we get to make the choices of the foods that we eat. So I wanted to share with you guys some of the traditional favorite foods like pasta and burgers and pizza and how you can make healthier lower point options. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for video number three and four in this series where we're going to be talking snacks and desserts. You don't want to miss that. So with that, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Hit the little bell. That way you're notified whenever a video is uploaded. You don't want to miss the next two in this series. They're going to be great with tons of great information for you. Also, if you're new, I'd love it if you would subscribe. If you're already subscribed, make sure that you hit that bell so you get the notifications when I upload. Thumbs up this video if you like having these savvy swaps and these eat this, not that series and leave your comments down below. I want to hear what is the one thing I shared with you today that you really had no idea that A, you could eat on your WW journey and B, what swap you could make to make it a little bit less 
point heavy. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're loving this series as much as I'm loving putting it together. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! What's it like to be the one that he turns to when he's